Sorry. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's program, NPL at Home, the Newark Rebellion. Um, I'm Tom Ankner, the director of the Charles F. Cummings New Jersey Information Center at the Newark Public Library. Just a little housekeeping note, I'll be keeping everyone's camera and microphone off during my presentation. If anyone has a question or comment, type it in the chat box. I will attempt to address it toward the end of the program. Before we get started, I just wanted to encourage you all to fill out your census forms. Filling out the census is one small but very important thing everyone can do right now to help our city and our communities. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, please go to my2020census.gov and fill out the brief questionnaire. The information you provide affects funding for healthcare, transportation, your local schools, and many other needs. Remember, my2020census.gov. It is safe, secure, and confidential. Well, today we continue with our NPL at Home programs. These are designed as guides to the special collections of the Newark Public Library, uh, particularly those items that have been digitized and downloaded to our digital archive. Today, I will, will be focusing on items in the archive related to the Newark Rebellion of July 1967. Just a little historical perspective. Uh, the Newark Rebellion, or the Sorry, I have to, I don't have an assistant today, so I have to admit people on my own. So, it's, so there'll be little gaps uh, during the program. Uh, just a little historical perspective. The Newark Rebellion, or the riots, as, is, as it is sometimes called, is a seminal event in the history of the city. The rebellion broke out 53 years ago this week in response to a complex series of circumstances not so unfamiliar to urban residents of color today. Newark in 1967 was a majority black city still run by mostly white politicians and officials. The mayor was white, the chief of police was white, and all but two members of the city council were white. And the city was decaying, deindustrializing as companies and white residents fled to the suburbs, taking jobs and wealth with them. Police brutality was common. Add to this mix an attempt by the city to build a medical school in the central ward on land occupied by the homes of black and brown residents. Also, an important city job with the Board of Education had just been offered to a white former councilman rather than a black candidate widely considered more qualified. So when taxi driver John Smith was arrested for a minor offense on July 12, 1967, um, it became the spark that started the fire. Smith was taken to a local police precinct house and a rumor soon spread through the neighborhood that he had been beaten and killed by police. He in fact was not killed, but the rumors led to violence that lasted the better part of five days. 26 people died and millions of dollars of property damage were sustained. Over the years, the Newark Public Library has collected materials related to the rebellion. In addition to books and photos, we have also collected manuscript and archival material. Some of this material has been digitized and is now available in the library's digital archive. So I just want to show you that. I'm going to just admit one more person. Oh, one more person is coming in. Um, and so I will share my screen with you. I want to show you uh, our digital archive and some of the items that we have digitized related to the Newark Rebellion. is there. Okay, so this is the, this is the main page of the digital archive or digital repository. The address is digital.npl.org. And uh, so this is, um, when, once you get to this page, this is where you can see all of the items that we have digitized over, um, over the last uh, few years. We've had this for about three and a half years now, and we've um, down uploaded many uh, materials here. Now, what I'm gonna do is for, um, for material related to the rebellion, I'm just going to do a search in the general search box in the upper right-hand corner. I'm gonna search for two terms because it's um, the rebellion is referred to uh, in, at different, in different ways at different times. Um, older material is generally um, cataloged under Newark riots and newer material is um, cataloged under Newark rebellion. So I'm gonna begin by just searching under Newark riots. And so Newark riots in quotes and do a search. Okay, so there are some, um, about 208 items that came up. I'm not going to show you all of these. I'm just going to do a selection. The first item that comes up is a collection that we've put together over the years called the Newark Riots Collection. 
uh, which is um, two, two boxes, uh, two boxes of archival material. Um, we've only digitized some of the material in those boxes because a lot of the material is um, our um, news articles that there are um, copyright issues with. So you didn't real, really feel that we could digitize them and put them, make them available online. But these are just some of the items that we've had donated that are kind of interesting that we have digitized. This first item is a, an armband uh, that an aid and a, a walk for understanding um, war. And this was actually, I guess, about an hour, this is about a year after the rebellion. But um, this is, um, this is from a, um, a material, this is a material donated by Bill Duffy, uh, who was, was a seminarian in Newark at the time of the rebellion. Um, he donated this, remembering that this was an a, a walk that took place during the rebellion. It looks like it took place about a year later, but that's, um, that's, this is basically an armband, a paper armband that he had held for about 40 years, 50 years, and he donated to the library a couple of years ago. Uh, we go back to the list of items here. Um, this, some of these others. Um, okay, so this is an interesting item. This is um, a legal document uh, in the investigation into the rebellion uh, that took place several months later. This is a legal document that actually has the names of many of the people, uh, names of all the people who died um, and some of the details of their deaths. And this is uh, something that gets used from uh, quite often. Uh, we used to have to hand people the uh, paper document, but because it's digitized now, we can just refer them to the digital archive and they can actually look at this. It's, uh, so it was, uh, this is from, I think, February of 1968. And you can turn the pages here with this document by using the arrows. It's designed as a book. And the, all of the people who died um, as a result of the rebellion are listed here in alphabetical order. Uh, the age that they were at the time of their death, um, the approxim approximate time and date of their death, and some of the circumstances surround their, surrounding their death. Um, let's see, somebody, I have one question, let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, someone is asking um, if you can access this collection on your own. Yes. These are all the, all the material I'm showing you is free and av is available free online. It's uh, so digital.npl.org. You go to that site and you can look at this yourself. I just have to let a few people into the... Um... Okay. I will... Okay. And hopefully everybody can still see this. Anyway, you can page through this document. You can get a list of the 26 people who died during the rebellion, uh, their ages, the time and death, their dates, and some detail around their death. Anyway, so go, we go back. That is, uh, that's uh, one of the items in that collection that I showed you. We go back to the main list of the, in the Newark riots collection. Uh, there's a conference, there was a conference about 10 years after the rebellion. Uh, dealing with the, um, uh, yeah, I'll answer, I'll answer your questions later, okay? Let's see, I, we got a lot of people coming in, okay. All right. This was a conference that took place about 10 years after the rebellion, and it's, um, this is, this is in 1977, and this is a, a program from that conference, and again, you can page through it like a book. If you need to make it bigger, you can either make it full screen by clicking on that symbol I just clicked on. You can also use the magnifying lens to make it larger so you can read it and you can still page through and you can go look up and down the page by using the uh, scroll bar here. Okay, going back to the list of documents. This is, um, this is an, a document that is, also comes from the Newark uh, Riots Collection, uh, Fighting the Blight, uh, 50s and 60s. This came out sometime later, but it deals with the rebellion, so we actually included it in that collection. Uh, this is about the blight hearings that uh, one of the um, uh, events that led to the Newark Rebellion was the building of the medical school. And in order to build the medical school, the city held what were called blight hearings about the land that the medical school was still to be built on to prove that the land, that that land was not, didn't, uh, was, uh, was, um, I guess, worth uh, taking 
uh, to build the medical school on a very controversial process, of course. Um, but anyway, this is this is an article about them. The blight hearing is related to the Newark Rebellion. Anyway, so I showed you that collection. Now I want to bring. I want to go back to. Um, I want to go back to the original screen, the original Newark riots search, because there were other things other than in the Newark riots collection that are there. There were items in other collections that um, I also wanted to show you. There were these great photos we had um, donated just a couple of years ago. Newark, Newark riots photos by Al Lowe. And I'm sorry, I don't know who Al Lowe was. He donated these digital images to us a couple of years ago. And what I like about them is actually because is that they're color images. Most of the uh, imagery that we have from the time of the New York Rebellion is in black and white, but these are in color. And these were pictures that Mr. Blow took um, he may have been a journalist. Um, I don't think he worked for one of the Newark papers, but he, um, so these were, these were images he took and these are you know, like beautiful black and white photo or beautiful color photos um, of not beautiful images, but I mean, they're, the, the, the photos themselves are really nice uh, color. Um, so th this is uh, the metadata, describe, not, doesn't describe much about them. They're called Newark Riots photos. And um, I'll go back to the original screen and you can see a few, I'll just show you a few of these. There are several photos he donated, another photo he took, yet another photo, and I won't go into any detail about what these are. I'll just show them to you on the screen. He really didn't provide much uh, commentary about the photos themselves, he just donated them. They were, they, but they were took dur taken during the rebellion. Uh, anyway, we have a bunch of those, and there's our uh, another one here. Okay, and there are other images like that. There are a series of images like that. Those are so now I've, we've looked for Newark under Newark riots. You can also search under Newark rebellion and see what comes up under Newark rebellion. Okay. We have various items here, only about 11 under that subject heading because that's kind of a newish uh, term used to describe what happened in July of 67. This first item is a, from our poster collection. It was, uh, the, it came out on the 50th anniversary of the rebellion in 2017. Uh, this comes from the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice. They created this folder, or this poster, sorry, and it's, it, we um, catalog it in the Newark Posters collection, as you see there. Uh, and this is just a like a poster advertising an event they had. Um, looks there's you can see they're linking it to Black Lives Matter. Committing a few more people. Okay, they're linking what happened in July of '67 to the Black Lives Matter movement now taking place. Back to the screen again. Show uh, some other things. This is, um, okay, so this is a preliminary analysis of statements concerning law enforcement during the Newark Rebellion. And this was uh, from the um, Doug Eldridge collection. Doug Eldridge was a journalist for the Newark Evening News during the rebellion and he later, and he was also a um, historic preservationist and a community activist who later donated materials uh, to the library and there are several materials in his collection dealing with the rebellion. And this is something, I don't think he says where this came from, it's a judicial record. I don't think he says who produced this, let's see. Uh, prepare, oh, okay, prepared for the use of the Newark Human Rights Commission, which was a city office uh, in the uh, Newark, um, in the Newark city government in the 60s and prepared by the Newark Legal Services Project. Oh, was, was, there a, was there a typo? Thank you, we'll have to correct that. Sorry about that. Thank you for letting us know that. Okay, uh, and there was some other document. Newark 20 years later, this is uh, from the Gus Henningberg collection. Um, don't know why this, let's see. I don't know why, um, People had some people are having trouble getting in, but um, this is from 1987. This is from the Gus Henningberg collection. Gus Henningberg was a, uh, a consultant and community activist, and he uh, was very active in um, uh, issues around affirmative action. Uh, and he was also, I think he was the head of uh, Sharp James's uh, transition team when he became mayor in 1986. This was a document prepared in early 1987 dealing with uh, 
the 20th anniversary of the Newark Rebellion. It's kind of interesting, 1987. And all of these, as I said, are viewable um, for free at digital.npl.org. This is a, um, some, a Mary Baraka birthday celebration uh, that mentions the rebellion. Uh, this comes from the Barbara J. Kukla papers. Barbara Kukla was a journalist at the uh, Star Ledger for many years, and she retired in 2004. A few years ago, she donated many materials to us, and this is uh, one of the objects she donated to us. This is uh, something else from the Doug Eldridge collection, a Metropolitan Survey. Um, question, this is a, questions for a survey interview on conditions in Newark and the Newark Rebellion. It's kind of, could be kind of interesting, potentially a real interest to a researcher, I guess. You can look through this, uh, this document again. You can go through page by page by using the arrows. Forward, to use the right arrow. Backwards, to use the left arrow. And I'm, I'm just basically showing you some, some of the uh, items that are in these collections. Let's see if there's anything else here that's kind of interesting. Uh, a few other things from um, the Newark Rebellion as well. Uh, report for Action press conference. This, I believe, was the uh, hearing but from the governor after the rebellion. Um, yeah, a draft of opening remarks of Robert Lilly, president of the New Jersey Bell Telephone Company on the Newark Rebellion and the commission. He was appointed to, a um, few months after the uh, rebellion, he was appointed to head a commission by the governor, uh, the governor at the time, uh, Richard Hughes, to look into the rebellion. And he, um, these were his, this draft of his opening remarks. Okay, so I've done a search for Newark riots and Newark rebellion, and this is all, the, these are the items that I came up with. So I just wanted to stop sharing my screen. I don't need to show you uh, any more. So I, I don't need to show you anything else, but there are many more items there. I just wanted to show you a short, a brief selection of some of the items that are available. Um, not everything has been digitized. So if you want to look at these collections, like the Newark Riots collection, there are several things we have not digitized. If you ever want to look at them, you can make an, uh, you can make, uh, an appointment with us once we reopen. And it looks like that date. We now have a date. We've got a date over the weekend, July 27th. The buildings will be reopening on a um, um, limited basis. Um, I believe only Monday to Friday, I believe only 11 to 3, and a lot of the details are being worked out, but on July 27th, the buildings of the Newark Public Library should be reopening to the public. We are now providing, um, we are now providing um, uh, curbside service in the branches, and beginning next Monday, we foresee providing curbside service at the main library, but the buildings are not open to the public until July 27th. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to, these were just a few of the um, items I wanted to show you from those collections. And I also wanted to talk about a couple of other collections that we have obtained that we have not had time to digitize yet or organize. Two years ago, Junius Williams donated 24 boxes of materials to us. Junius Williams is an activist and a lawyer uh, and a historian. Uh, he's been around Newark since the uh, mid 60s. He was in Newark during the rebellion. He was a young law student at the time. Um, he has donated materials, 24 boxes, as I said, that we are applying for a grant right now uh, that we, we will be um, organizing several collections, including his, if we get the grant. So I'm crossing my fingers. And, uh, but that's, there's a lot of really great material in there, including material about the rebellion. Another collection we just obtained like a week and a half ago, which I'm very excited about, is the, um, is the Donald Malafronte collection. Donald Malafronte was, um, the executive assistant to the mayor of Newark in 1967 at the time of the rebellion. And I met him about three years ago and he mentioned to me that he had some materials that he wanted, would like to donate, but they were at his, at his house in upstate New York. And I got and didn't hear from him again. Well, about a month ago, he called me and he said, do you still want that stuff? And I kind of like practically jumped out of my skin. And of course I want it. Yes, please, please. And so uh, we drove up, my boyfriend and I drove up about a week and a half ago to his place in upstate New York. And we came away with a, um, a footlocker and a page box, a, uh, a banker's bo box filled with uh, papers from his time working for Mayor Adonisia at Newark City Hall. And there's undoubtedly going to be 
great material in there about the rebellion. I'm just, I have not really had the time to look through it yet. Uh, and I'm not a, on site, so I haven't really had a chance to, but it's going to be something um, I, I'm really looking forward to going through it and hopefully we'll be able to organize it soon and digitize some of those materials because that will be a great addition to our uh, collection on materials related to the Newark Rebellion. Um, okay, and I just wanted to talk about those two collections. Um, and I was wondering if anybody had any other questions. I think Max, you had a question. Who compiled that document? Let me go back. Let me go back to that. Let me go because I there should be something in the metadata about that. Just a minute. Here. Okay. Let's see. Back to New York riots. Collection. This. Let's see what it says in the metadata about that. Um, yeah, it's a superior court document. So it was um, maybe a grand jury or something. Um, it says decision. I'm, I'm not sure that's an accurate description of what it is. Uh, it looks like it came out in 1968, early 1968. Uh, but it was, it's uh, the creator name is Superior Court of New Jersey. So let's look at that actually. Let's look at it and blow it up a little bit, see if we can get a better look at it. Uh, to the Honorable James R. Giuliano, assignment judge of the Superior Court of New Jersey in the County of Essex. Yes, yeah, so it was a grand jury report uh, from the Superior Court, eighth grand jury of the 1967 term was assigned the task, the task of investigating the 26 deaths that occurred during the civil disturbances in Newark during a period from July 13th through July 18th, 1967. Um, a previous grand jury has already handed down an indictment in one of these cases. Uh, the members of the grand jury faced this undertaking in the spirit of her solemn oath, blah, 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 et cetera. And I think we might have another question. Oops. Okay. Just a minute. Okay, so anyway, that, yeah, so it's a grand, it's, it was a grand jury report from the Superior Court. So let me, Share. Okay. Oh, uh, yes. Um, so we are, I just wanted to describe the, uh, somebody's asking a question. I wrote this. Yeah, we just, we actually, uh, someone asked a question about the uh, platform that we're using for a digital archive. That's a librarian question. Uh, we were using, uh, we were using um, ContentDM. We recently switched to Islandora and we are in the process of um, transferring the materials from content DM to, to Islandora. So Island, the Islandora platform is not complete, but within a few months, it should be complete. And um, anyway, so I'm, that about concludes our program for today. So um, thank you for um, taking part in this today. And if anyone wants to know more about other programs uh, for the any programs from the Newark Public Library, check the library's calendar at npl.org slash calendar. Have a good day, everyone. Stay safe.